What's up, y'all? Welcome to the stream. Today I'm like, I'm taking some art <clears throat> from this original psychedelic dungeon mock up. Is it gate or boss? It's, I think it's this one, psychedelic. Here we go. This big cactus. I never put this in the game. I'm like, man, I gotta put this in. And same thing with these wiggly, these supposed to be like wiggly underwater snake-like grass things. And here's some of these like, just like rocks, you know? Put this stuff in the game. Also, I, there's some little ones. Like right here, these little ones. So they're gonna be, um, they'll be around too. Just litter these everywhere, you know? Litter, litter. And also, I want to make them an item. So, you can actually, like, if you see these little ones, you can go hit them with your sword, and sometimes they have a cactus in them. Maybe every time they have a cactus in them, I don't know. Anyways, this should be some fun. Oh, there's these big sword things, too. Oh, yeah, and this thing on the ground. Lots of cool stuff to put in. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the big cactus. This might be a little too white here. Yo, salad. <laughs> Sup, man? How's it going? What's up, Brandon Dyer? Needs more plumbus. Is that the top part? Is that what you call this? I can make a couple of these. One of them can have a big old plumbus. Somebody needs to define plumbus. Oh, it's a Rick and Morty reference? I haven't seen the I haven't seen the latest season. I gotta watch that. It's probably on that season. Okay, so here we go. Let's save this as right. Big cactus. All right, so there's that. Um, let's take some of these grass things. Yeah, that, yeah. Here we go. Thanks, Metrius. You did? Congratulations. Okay, so tell me about it. What's your multi -thread threading strategy?
We're gonna call this one wiggly grass. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's so great to name something like that. I'm calling it Wiggly Grass. Sometimes I'm like all like, what should I name it? I better name it the most accurate thing ever. But Wiggly Grass is so much better. So that'll, that'll be fun to animate this Wiggly Grass. Um, let's get uh, the rock in here as well. Where is those rocks? Oh, there's bigger kelp too. That's right. These are kelp. Yeah, we might as well try the bigger kelp too, huh? Did I make them a, I made like a kelp group though. Oh, here's the original grass. Oh, that's uh, not that one. There's the big grass. I just want a single copy of the big grass. Oh, is that here, maybe? Thanks, Dieharders. Using a mutex, make sure the OpenGL thread isn't reading from what from the draw list at the same time the game logic is writing to it. Okay, cool. So that's right. That's the only thing that has to be shared, basically. Okay, so anyways, I can save, I can finish this one later. Or I'll just call it Big Grass, whatever. Shadow, Sprites, Wiggly Grass, Big! Oh, there you go, you just have two separate lists. Oh, that's cool. It's like a front buffer and a back buffer almost. Yeah. Cool. Where's these rocks? Is this one of them? That's the old one. You got, that's where you got the idea from? Cool. I'm really behind that idea. I love that. It's such a simple way, right? Way back in the day when we had slow ass computers, we're like, why don't we just fill up a buffer with our video data and then swap it with another buffer once we're ready? Oh, check it out. A simple solution that works for 8 bit systems. Oh yeah, nice, nice. That's that sounds really satisfying to do those like higher level, um, like design things. Save yourself the time and make your system more efficient before you even before you even write it. Hell yeah.
Oh yeah, there's the beauty in that, right? Oh man, I love simplicity. I got in here for oh. Oh, really? What? Huh. So you do have to do like your own semaphores for like, for Mac at least. Ah, I don't want to name this thing Rock because like, <laughs> The main character's name is Rock, and it'll be confusing with these two letters right next to it. What? Who cares, right? I'm just gonna call it like this one Red Rock or whatever. Red Rock. It's a big red rock. It's all it is. Alright, there. Oh, cool. Oh, man, they've been doing that lately, like their documentation. It's like a little outdated these days. Okay, I want to do this big thing too. This ground thing. This will be fun to put in there. Oh, they did? Oh. Changing things. Changing things. This is kind of like a dais. Oh, this one day is too. Oh. Sounds like a totally new design. Which is like, um, which is neat, right? That was like, that was really cool how they upgraded that with Grand Central. They kind of like rethought of how to do threads, didn't they? Mm. Yeah, day is two. I already got like a day is one in here, I think. Oh, no, this goes in. Backgrounds. Yeah, well, this is day is two. All right.
And also these big things. These leaning tower thingies. I don't even know what these are. But they're kind of cool. Oh, right. Thread pooling. Hmm. Cool. Well, yeah, that's cool. So they kind of do it for you, huh? Uh. Oh, and the little cactuses in here. There's one of them. Yeah, the rib cage thing I just put in last night. Um, and the tower things, yeah, I gotta put those in too. These will all be really fun things to put into this dungeon. Make it cooler. Um, this is kind of a two for one dungeon thing too, because there's two of the dungeons that kind of use this art style, but with different colors. Uh, so, yeah. Two birds with one stone. But that, that's never really true, right? You actually, do you actually get two birds with one stone? All right, here we go. So a little cactus thing, you can... Still eating pixels? Put a little help of escape. <laughs> What's up, Grim Gary? This one's a uh, part of Shadow. I'm good, man. How about you? How is everything? What's new, man? What's new? Uh, I gotta call this one Cactus Little. I should really call the other one Cactus Big. Because then when I'm trying to find them, I'll be like, oh, there's the cactuses. Weird half a year? Yeah? It's been weird, huh? You play some song ringer? Nice, man. How's it going? Okay, so let's rename this. This one's cactus big. Cactus big zero. Oh, you're going with the ice dragon? Duking it out? Good news, um, good news. There's some, uh, there's boss portals now in the newest version that's coming out like next week. Um, there's boss portals. So once you've been to a boss, a portal opens from the entrance of the dungeon to the, um, to the boss room or to the before boss room. So, um, so that you basically, you can warp there from the beginning of the dungeon instead of having to go, if you die fighting the boss, you don't have to go back and fight the whole dungeon again. You just step through the portal back to the before boss room and then go fight the boss again. So that'll make like if you're if you're having trouble with a certain boss, um, that'll make that easier. But what what's your trouble? Are you stuck on like a um, a puzzle or the dungeon or the boss or what? All right, so we got the cactus in here. I could 
easily save one frame of this animation. Actually, let's get a timeline open. Let's create two frames and render that. Wiggly grass! Oh, the layout's dangerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I guess then, I guess the next version coming out soon will really help that situation with the boss portals. You won't have to go delete, you don't have to lead up to the boss as much. You only have to do it once, basically. All right, so let's just like make the tops wiggle a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, cool, good. Yeah, you got to save up your cacti. I have a bunch of those. This that got that boss is difficult. It's not easy. It's pretty uh but once you get him <clears throat> Anyway, I won't ruin it for you or whatever. But um um Yeah, if you can find other cactus pouches too. You can carry more cactuses, which helps with that. You won't have to like, you won't have to save them up as much. Once you have like three or four cactus pouches, you've got like up to 12 cactuses and you just like basically get them stocked all the time from fighting enemies. All right, let's save this red rock. We'll call it red rock zero. In the shadow. Oh, you're already at five pouches? You're an addict. <laughs> uh, oh man, I just I remember this idea I had last night to, to do the water shader cooler. Oh, I can't wait to do that. Day is two. I think I rendered this one already. And then the cactus little. Um, this one's going to have an animation, probably, I'll do like a single animation where this thing like explodes, yes, so that will be this animation, we're just going to call this Cactus Little for now, and render that. Which incidentally happens to be the thing I'm drawing today. Or drew yesterday and I'm putting it in today. Oh, the big towers too. <laughs> Can't forget those. There, this layer. This is like a, I'm just throwing assets in here. Throwing assets around right now. You know what's another quick thing that will make this whole dungeon cooler? Is throwing in stairs. 
That'll really help. Ooh, nice, man. I didn't name this yet. This is, yeah, this goes in shadow. So what do we call this one? Um, what do we call it? I called that other thing the red rock. So I'm going to call this one the red tower. Yeah, it, it kind of was designed to look like a giant sword because I was kind of like trying to go for um, the boss battle type feeling right here. Even though I didn't end up writing a scene where you fight Zero, I may in the future, maybe I'll do this for like a DLC, like a scene where you actually fight him, but you're kind of like training or something. Maybe you're sparring. I don't know. Yes, I can. Yeah, tell me what, okay, so tell me what areas um, are hard for you to see or what, what things are hard with when it comes to colors. Because um, I did try and, um, another person that really uh, has been enjoying Songbringer and played a lot of it was um, uh, Hard Boiled Egg. And he gave some great feedback on color, um, how to make things a little better for color blindness. So it was, Songbringer used to be a lot worse when it comes, for, when it comes to colorblind players. So tell me what areas you're having um, trouble with, and I can try and think of something to make it so you'll be able to see it, even though there's no color. I have I have kept that in mind with a lot of things. I've tried to be conscious of that when it comes to colors. Um, like, for example, the doors. The doors in the dungeons are colored, um, but they're very clear they very they're very clearly open or closed like locked or unlocked you know what i mean like when they're unlocked they're bright they're super bright they have all these lights and stuff like that so it really doesn't matter if you're if you're if you can't see color you can still see that this has got a really bright light and so that's like okay that door's open so okay cool yeah all right. Nice, man. Well, let me know and I'll definitely do what I can to improve that. And sometimes it's really simple. And you know what? So thank you for sharing that because like sometimes it, that leads to making a certain piece of art even better too. And like the doors, for example, before the doors were, um, weren't as cool looking. And then, you know, when, when I had to try and think about, okay, how can I make this look clearly like it's, you know, this or that, it really led to a better door. And better looking door too. So, all right. So we got those, those, everything. We got everything. We got everything ready in its own files. I'm gonna even should I close this? Oh, I'll keep all. We'll keep all this stuff open. Now let's make sure the files are correct. Oh, that's right. I've been dropping to a shell a different way. today all right so what do we add we had a dais to big cactus cact okay let's get rid of big cactus because we're doing cactus big oh let's make sure this still 
all the sprite sheets fit and everything. I should take a quick look at backgrounds actually. I just added a big thing to backgrounds, so that might have, that might be something to check. Before I just assume. Oh yeah, there's still plenty of room in this sprite sheet. This is the big stuff. Oh, the water dragons? Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know those. Okay. Okay. Let me add a, add a, little, a little note about this. Cool, thanks you guys. Yeah, so what I could do there with the um with the green balls of energy or whatever is um I think what I would probably do is make the um, as soon as the ball starts losing its energy, it should it should stop doing its damage. In fact, I'll just add that to my list right now. So basically, once the poison bubble starts popping, or once it once the those little green balls of energy, they start fading out. Um, it will it will not have its attack component anymore or whatever. Basically, it won't, you won't be able to collide with it. You won't get damaged from it. It'll just pop. So that'll seem a lot better because, you know, visually as it starts to pop, it's no longer doing any damage. It'll just make more sense as a game, you know, from a gameplay standpoint. That's a pretty quick and easy thing too, so I'll throw it up on top of my list. Okay, so these, what are we at now? Days two, Cactus Big, Cactus Little, Red Rock, Red Tower. That should be red tower zero. Wiggly grass, dais, cactus big, cactus little, red rock, wiggly grass, wiggly grass big. The only thing I did in export was the wiggly grass big. Did I close it? Oh, oh, I didn't save this one? <laughs> oh, I should check shadow, dang. That one I just added a big file to. Okay, we're getting close. Close to the close to the max for this sprite sheet. Oh, what I'll probably do with this sprite sheet is move all of Rock's animations to its his own sprite sheet. 
um, which requires some changes to the shaders. There's a lot of special shaders going on here. So anyways, that'll be its own project. But anyways, that'll free up 1,500 frames in this sprite sheet, which will make this sprite sheet compile a lot faster. And just kind of, you know, I don't know. It'll be a little, just better for the whole game. <clears throat> All right, we'll do that later, though. Rocket Bunny, what's up? How you doing today, man? I think we're ready to do this. Let's check this in. Oh, wait, no. Red Tower PSD. I forgot to do to export the wiggly grass. Big. Oh no, Matt's getting worse. Oh dang, man. Wiggly grass big. This will also be a animated. So we'll start off the timeline for it. Wiggly grass big. Save. Export. There. So now I've batched together like um, a bunch of little tasks, which kind of make this whole workflow a lot faster. I get a lot more things accomplished when I like batch things together. Whoops. That should be at least two frames. You know, the batching time saving technique. It's progressing very well, man. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah, things are going great. Yesterday I added some secret portals. The go the secret tunnels to connect the world. Today I'm adding some cool stuff to this the psychedelic dungeon. So in fact, let's do that. Let's get let's check this in. And I think I got wiggly grass big. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So we can add all those and um, commit it all. New psychedelic art. I had to look up how to spell psychedelic and I was surprised. I didn't know how to spell it. How does sprite batching work? Sprite batching is a different is a runtime technique for um well no not necessarily a runtime technique but it's just you put a whole bunch of sprites into one texture you take a tiny a lot of tiny little sprites you put them in one big sprite or big texture actually is what it really is like like this. And then you load that single file, just one texture. But this one texture could have thousands of sub little sub images inside it. And that's what a sprite batch is or a sprite sheet. Looks kind of like that. Yeah, kind of like a tile set. All right, so we'll go to the wait. Oh, I changed the world's changed. So what will be? Oh, I don't even know. I guess we'll try dungeon two. See if it's dungeon two. Change the worlds. Oh wait, no, I didn't change the dungeons. The dungeons are the same. Just the overworlds changed. Okay, wait, dungeon one, some, sometimes people's dungeon ones will change in this next update. 
Oh, this is dungeon two? Okay, we want dungeon three at least. <laughs> Did you never bother using it? Nice, man. Oh, here it is. Nice, we found it. All right. So yes, let's throw some... Um, first of all... Whoa, what happened? Ugh. Turn off music, verbosity. Oh, right, yeah, the technical name is for that, it's Sprite Atlas. And then the batching part is the GPU, the runtime part, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to smack him? Oh. <laughs> uh. Mm -hmm. So should I make, okay, which one of these should be tiles? Some of these could be tiles. Well, this could be like a tree tile, maybe. And then the little, oh, let's do the little, the cactus little will have to be its own tile. For sure. Those are going to be fun. The day is two. Mutinous, what's up, man? Zelda Breath of the Wild, my thoughts on it? Um, it actually looks really good. It looks like it's going to be one of the best Zelda games they've made recently. I've hated how the latest Zelda games have, um, I mean, not the latest ones, but like the all the ones in the 2010s and the two, even the late 2000s ones, they were really would hold your hand so much and make you walk through all the freaking tutorials. I really hope that, I really hope that Zelda Breath of the Wild goes back to the point where they don't have so many tutorials, they don't hold your hand, they don't make you do stuff at first. They don't gate you in and lock you into like everything so much at the beginning and force you down one single path. I hope they open up all the paths like they did in the very first Zelda game. That's my favorite part about the very first Zelda game is it didn't limit you. It lets you explore. I really hope it lets you explore again rather than forcing you down you know, a certain path, at least at the beginning. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so the Cactus Little will have to be its own tile. The Deus 2, I guess that will be a miscellaneous tile. Wait, no. Yeah, this could be a miscellaneous tile or its own tile. Shoot, any of these could be their own tiles and it'd be fine. I don't know, the day is though should might need to be its own like and it might not even need to be a its own like tile. Ah uh, no, yeah, I guess it should be a miscellaneous file. Whatever. Alright, let's start with the cactus big. 
this one. <laughs> All right, we'll make this one its own tile. Start adding these tiles while well, I'm trying to put this all into one thing so I don't have to recompile my constants so many times. <clears throat> Miskatonic tile? What's that? Oh, Mutinous, by the way, what are your thoughts on Zelda Breath of the Wild? What is everybody else's thoughts on this? Does it look good? Is it going to live up to its promises? Is it going to be how they're trying to make it sound? It is. What are you guys' thoughts on the latest Zelda games in general? All the 3D ones recently. Oh, of HP Lovecraft Tales? Oh. I've got to read me some of these. Yeah. Oh, really? It's, there's you could say that dais as well. Oh, I never knew that. That's an interesting word. Okay, so K tile, cactus big. Cactus small. Should I do its own? Yes. <laughs> like, should I do its own tile? Yes, do its own tile. <laughs> There's some wiggly grass. Some wiggly grass big. Um, K tile red rock, K tile red tower. What else was there? The dais. I think this could be a miscellaneous tile. But everything else should be its own. You have your little bias? Mostly optimistic? Cool. Me too. Me too. And actually, the, I, the Nintendo Switch looks pretty cool too. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, you're kind of boycotting them about how they've been about that? Yeah, I know, right? There's just like, there's been a few of those kind of things going on in the games business lately. The thing like that, and there's also the thing with PAX and their whole thing. God, that's so horrible with PAX. Jeez, right? I don't know. Okay, so we'll start implementing some tiles. Um, all I gotta do is throw in some some methods into area creation and some objects in entities. So let's start. Let's just start coding some objects here. Oh, uh, you have to look it up. I don't. I. It's better if you just look it up. This Pax um, Pax controversy. Just type that. Or PAX boycott or whatever.
All right. Well, first thing we'll do the cactus big. Let's give it an inline profile. I think that's how you do a profile. Inline. Oh, no, here they are. Here's some. Yeah, animations, idle, delay. Yeah, I did all that right. Sounds. Why did I ever doubt? Okay, so we're getting a render component. Reflection component, shadow. Do at least an offset Y of 12 or something big. What else? Collision component. Doesn't need a health component. I mean, we can do fun things like giving it a health component later if need be. Okay, so there, I'm just gonna start with that one tile. This cactus big. Act is big. Let's just do all these right now, actually. Cactus small. And what were the other ones I just added? Cactus big, cactus small, wiggly grass, and the red rocks. Yeah. So there's two of those, two of those, cactus big, cactus small, wiggly grass. Whoops. What's up, Kirilor? Yeah, this is K Tile. <laughs> ah, it's fun to me too. Red Rock Tile. This will be the Red Tower Tile. There. These methods are hooked up. Let's get them so they're actually methods.
So by doing a little method for each one of these tile types, you can add some intelligence to how um, it creates the the thing. So most of the, everything is gets done. Most of the work gets done by creating these little profiles here inside data, and so the, it reads this from data and creates all the different components that, that, that are made up make up this entity. But afterwards, you can do a few little intelligent things like, okay, maybe if this area is you know this type of dungeon, it does a red. Q or something like that, whatever. You can do different things at runtime by creating methods for each one. Wiggly grass intelligence, yes. The wiggly grass could be like, hey, I'm right next to some some red rock. Let me just rub up against this red rock. Yeah, I still use Xcode to debug. Which is kind of a, an annoying uh, thing, We're having to like switch uh, contexts. I would really like to get debugging done in Vim, and there's um, some plugins for it. So I'm going to be experimenting with that at some point when I have the time. Right now, I don't really have the time to change my debugger, but <laughs> yes, game object love stories. Who's the who's the one that does the um, erotic fan fiction for everything? Oh. From Bob's Burgers, Tina. So this is the wiggly grass tile. Freaking love him. So it's like such a better editor than everything else I've tried so far. I haven't tried Emacs. I'm not trying to start that war. Better love story than Twilight. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't know. I I haven't read those books or seen those movies, but I understand what you what you're saying there. All right, there, we got them all done. Let's do, um, all I gotta do now is just like int, well, just this auto entity. Come on, give me the pop-up. It's not giving me the pop-up. Yeah. I haven't tried Emacs. But yeah, I know, there's some sweet, sweet bonuses to Emacs. I love how you can draw stuff in your editor. You know, you could like use, use ping files or whatever. You could draw in it. And some other really essential things too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Love triangle. It's like really secret. Yeah, it's like to trigger it or to see it happen is like... Not easy. So the autocomplete just wasn't popping up there, but I, so I want to check this. Is that, oh, there's so many auto entities. Yeah, but there's an XY one. You can play, yes, right? You can play Tetris. I, I know, I, I believe it. Somebody's written like a OpenGL emulator for, for Emacs, I'm sure. Mm hmm. You wish that? You don't wanna, oh, all right. So like, what would the seeds be like actual six letter words? Or would they be just random letters? Okay, so now let's plop down one of these cactus bigs. Area patterns. We'll throw it right in the entrance. Instead of one of the statues or whatever, we'll use um, one of these cactus bigs. And I think that's just in entrance three. Pattern entrance. I think it's just three. Yeah, dungeon entrances. 
Either one's fine. Your conscious song we're gonna see it is E. It's gonna change. Yeah. Oh dang. It's all gonna change in this next update. Guaranteed all the overworlds have changed. No, that's not a guarantee, actually. There it's a total possibility that the old world could have turned out exactly how the new worlds are. But it's likely that it's a different seed that gets that exact same world now. The overworld's better though. There's secret overworld tunnels and lots of bug fixes and stuff. And all the dungeons are the same. Except for maybe the first dungeon. A little bit different in the first dungeon. Yes, you did. It's thanks to me. Well, I have, who do I have to thank? Um, the dudes from this, that showed me, that played this one Vim video, um, or made this one Vim video. It was called Faster Vim, or How to Get Faster with Vim, or something like that. They really, they, they pointed out how to use, you know, the Y2J, or whatever, you know, like, if I want to just, I do that all the time now, where I'm just like, okay, I want to copy the next seven lines, because I can quickly see, like, oh, this, there's seven lines I need to copy. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to break myself with these kind of habits too. I do I do that all the time. I'm still using H, J, K, and L. I'm looking sharp today. Thanks, man. So is this it? Is this the pattern? Psychedelic. <laughs> Psychedelic is, yes, style card three, which I think should give you, okay, let's just find out. Set a breakpoint, do this the old school way. <clears throat> Entrance three, let's see if it's that one or that one. Yeah, horizontal. I'm getting I'm getting a little better with using W to move between words. Um, yeah, I gotta get better at that too. Like what they even the video I watched even they, they recommended even turning off your H J K and L for a while. They're like just turn off your H J K and L and figure out how to do things without it. Okay, so it is pattern entrance three, right? This pattern, this is pattern entrance one? Oh, duh. Of course, this is, um. Uh, oh, I guess let's go to area create. <laughs> You're bringing a torch to the pitchfork. Uh, I know that's the problem with them um, when it comes to camel case because I use camel case too. You use T and F. Hmm. I I didn't really I, I like. I tried F for a while, and I found that I wished F would have found onto the next line too. You know, I was like, I just, I want to find the next occurrence of this pattern of characters, which is where find comes in. So I actually just remapped my F to find. So I do that a lot. Like if I'm like, uh, if I want to find K tile entrance. I'm just pressing F to do that instead of pressing um, 
uh, forward slash, which is harder to type, you know? <laughs> I'm kidding. I like messing with how, with how the defaults are. I like making my own VimRC for sure. I'm really into it now. I'm like, oh yeah, I could just remap Vim's G this to that. There's got to be, right? I really wish there was. Because it's such it's so handy. I really liked F. That was one of my favorite things at first. I'm like, whoa, F, cool. I can go to like that character. But then when I quickly I was found out, like, oh, it can't go to the next line, though. Yeah, it's got to be. Oh, this is entrance for... No, that's the toggle switch. Oh. It's not entrance four. Yeah, it is entrance three. All right. That's confirmed. That's that too. I'm sure there's some kind of Vim thing that's better. It makes your W and E and all that, make those better for sure. That would be really good. Just make it better for C++, you know, for camel case. For camel case in general, not just C++. All right, so we'll make entrance three have its own pattern. Or no, let's just make this if it's, um. It's tile cars three. We're gonna throw a big cactus. Make a blocks rect. So make a rectangle of, uh, where are we gonna put this? Not in the middle of the screen, but to the right. Let's make a center point for it. W2 minus three, H2 minus one. Yeah, about there. Yeah, you always remap everything? Oh, you got, yeah, right? Oh, man. Three keys. Not, no do it. Can't do it. Right, right. So this will be c dot x minus one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a s one tile for the uh, the big cactus, and then a group of like six to nine tiles, just six or nine. Let's start with six. Static, invincible, so they make a sound when you hit them. And this will be a block set, area pause, c dot x, c dot y, k tile, cactus big. Let's see this baby, come on. Poison Grog, what's up? Hello, man. Whoa, that looks really funny. It looks really out of place. So we definitely don't want to put any of these statues here. Can you walk through the... Oh, you can get... Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Cactus pig. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Yeah, procrastination. I love it. I love procrastination. Okay, so I guess this does need its own pattern. Yes, yes, its own pattern. All right, so I should I should comment this one too. This is um, the psychedelic dungeon two. Oh, it's swordless. Swordless to entrance. So pattern entrance three. Mm. Yeah. I really I like how Vim has its mappings um like this. Can I actually just open up? No, I can't open up files that way. Um, it has the no remap thing. You probably know about this. You've probably seen this before, but it's got the no remap. So it doesn't matter what anything else has been remapped to this. This is just like the end all be all. Nothing else can remap it. What's up, super low, low scores? I'm using a language called C++. Okay, so pattern entrance three has its own pattern now. Whoops. All right. And all it has so far is a cactus big. Cactus big, so fun saying it now. The Grim Gary brought up his point. <laughs> cactus big. Hey everybody, I'm Cactus Big. Okay, so first thing to make this thing look better is fix its shadow. Offset needs to be way higher than that, like maybe 32. Maybe some water on the screen would be cool to see. It's looking better, but still it needs more. 42. There we go, maybe a little more even. And let's throw some fire around here too, and like a, maybe some water right here, it'd be cool to see that reflected. Let's do... An, uh, a light pillar tile, a fire pillar. What's up, Pete and Wally? So yeah, we'll do plus, oh, whoops, wrong one. <laughs> plus four, H2, plus one. No, 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 these are nice, though. a little lower on the screen. Maybe like minus two, light pillar. Let's do some water underneath. Oh, this is for the cactus. Well, what did I just do? <laughs> Those moments where you press a key and you don't know what you remapped it to, or you don't you hit some other key that you, that you've never hit before, you didn't know what it would do. 
Like x minus 2, c dot x plus 2, c dot y, minus 1, well, more like minus 3. Some water. And then the light pillar will go out of this little block. Okay, so that needs I would also need a reflection offset. Wow, that did a lot of offset. Huh, that's weird. This offset Y is not, it's not doing what I would expect it to do. Yeah, as I expected to, the top of it is really too bright. It's blaring out the bloom shader. <laughs> the Offset Inquisition? The Offset Inquisition! All right, let's start adding some more of these tiles, like the cactus small and all that.
Keg's big, keg's small. Wiggly grass. There. Uh, now we should be able to try all these tiles out, actually. Let's just randomly position all of them. Let's try out... Um, K tile. Cactus. Small. Streaming there. What's that? <laughs> I'm still streaming. I'm just quiet. And the wiggly grass. And lastly, the wiggly grass big. <sighs> that red tower sword thing is gonna be pretty cool. Everything else looks missing. Looks like everything else got destroyed somewhere. Let's see if anything actually was. Created, but just empty. No, looks like they actually all those other tiles got. Just didn't get created.
So the cactus small, what happened there? Oh, it's called Cactus Little. <laughs> huh. Red rock, red tower, wiggly grass, wiggly grass, big. There's a few more things. The wiggly grass is even wiggling too. Okay, cool. Now we just gotta find the cat. Where's the cactus little? Is it like, is it there? We just can't see it? Or is it supposed to be? <laughs> this thing needs some more collision around it. Yeah, I gotta work on the art too. It makes the art all fit this, uh, Value, the values and the, the hue and everything about this old sword thing and this rock. This all needs to be touched up. And the, the, cac the cactus too. This thing's a little too bright. Needs a little more collision area. Okay, so we just gotta find out where the hell is this little cactus at? It's supposed to be right here. W2 plus three. H2 minus 3. Let's do just W2 plus 2. Our cactus, I saved this, right? Oh, there it is. Must have been like covered up by something. Now I got a little cactus. Cool. Hi, little cactus. What's up, little cactus? So you'll be able to. Oh, you. That's right. You don't have your sword here. Well, whatever. We'll use the top hat to open these up. And these will these will be something you can find later on in the game too, like other places, caves, maybe the overworld. You can find these little cactuses. Use your sword, use weird weapons, whatever, to like make them explode, and then you get a, you can get a cactus out of them. Alright, well, I guess that's gonna be it for today's stream. I don't got much more uh, energy. I'm still sick. It's adorable. Yes, you'll be able to eat them, just like the other cactuses. So you, you'll chop it down, that gives you a cactus item which you can eat. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Sorry I gotta get going early, I'm just like, still sick. Still need to, more, st I need some rest, that's what I need. So, we'll see y'all later. Thanks a lot for watching and I appreciate you all. Have a good one.